Hello everyone, I'm Stranger, MVL, and today our mission is Nocturne on the PC. I had previously taken on the Blair Witch Trilogy in a previous video, where the first game, Rustin Parr, is a direct follow-up to Nocturne, featuring characters from the Spook House, such as Stranger and Svelana. And I also touched on the fact that Blood Rain was originally developed as Nocturne 2, where Svetlana, the half-vampire or Dampir, would have been the main character. As you can see from this concept art of Svetlana for Nocturne 2, up against released art for Rain from Blood Rain, Svetlana and Rain are very similar, both being Dampir, wielding similar weapons and donning similar attire. Although I think it's a shame Nocturne never got a true sequel, Terminal Reality's nods to Nocturne remained in Blood Rain. And perhaps that's a mission for another time. Today our objective is clear, Nocturne. For this assignment, I won't be showing the entire game. Just like with the Blair Witch Trilogy, I want to give you a taste of the action so you can see how good the game is, but I want to leave you wanting more, with a lot of the game to discover yourself, without too many spoilers should you wish to pursue it on your own. So for today's assignment, we'll be looking at the first chapter, but there are many more. Just like with the Blair Witch Trilogy I previously reviewed, there are issues with running this program on a modern computer. The first computer I attempted to use wouldn't install the game from the disc at all. When I tried on a different computer, it would install, but wouldn't launch. But thankfully there is a patch, which I located on a website, My Abandoned Wear which fixed many of the issues, including allowing the game to launch. But because I'm using different hardware than the program expects, there are still a few issues. For one, I can't use the advanced 3D models, which would make the game look better. But for some reason on the machine I'm using, with the advanced 3D models option enabled, the wars can become see-through. But most notably, the clothing textures go crazy. Believe me, they are not supposed to look like this. It's like every character is standing in strong wind, with their clothing being blown all over the place. This particular issue I believe is caused by the frame rate being uncapped, so the physics are running much faster than ever intended because modern PCs are more powerful than when this game was made. I had thought setting a lower max frame rate of 30 in my Nvidia graphic card settings would solve this issue, but alas, this evil never dies. I had both of these issues previously with the Blair Witch Trilogy, but even with these unintended issues, the game is still very playable, and overall, to me, still looks good. When it comes to gameplay, the game is a classic survival horror, which I think should be considered in the ranks of Alone in the Dark, Resident Evil, and Silent Hill. But it has been left in the shadows, perhaps due to the lack of follow-up games, and maybe because it was only released on PC. As I understand, a Dreamcast port was planned, but this was scrapped due to the Dreamcast's untimely demise. The game plays much in the way of classic survival horror games. There are fixed camera angles, and your objectives are a mix of puzzle solving, resource management, and combat, including bosses. The game by default is set up to use keyboard control only, but I set it up to use a combination of keyboard and mouse. With the keyboard controlling my basic movement, strafing, item use, and switching between the many weapons and ammunition types. The mouse I had set up for directional facing, action, and aiming. If you're used to using controllers, it may take a moment to accustom yourself to the controls. But to make things easier on yourself, I recommend turning on the aiming assist in the options, as the aim is very precise and the enemies are incredibly fast. As the game has no difficulty setting, I would consider this option enabled to be normal difficulty, and to turn it off would be very hard. Also, the game may seem very difficult from the beginning, and although no one said this mission would be easy, it's not as hard as it may seem at first, and there is a reason for that, which I will go on to explain. But for now, let's go on to the first story of the game, The Dark Reign of the Vampire King. We begin with Stranger, an agent of Spook House 
a hardened, grizzled veteran of the paranormal with a new mission at hand. Take a moment to accustom yourself to the commands, because unlike in the Blair Witch Volume 1, Rustin Parr, there is no tutorial here. Your enjoyment does not concern me. <sighs> the password, stranger. By this point, I could have killed you and flipped the switch to open the door myself. You wouldn't do that, would you? You are thrown straight into the action. After gaining entry to Spook House proper, your mission is explained. A gravely dangerous artifact of unimaginable power, thought of as the Holy Grail of Vampires is being held in a castle in Germany by the name of Gaustaut. An item like this has to be contained by Spook House, but it's not going to be easy. The journey to the castle will be treacherous, as not only has information trickled down of strange and supernatural events in the surrounding region, but the area is also crawling with werewolves. Due to the nature of the mission, Stranger is partnered with Svetlana, a half-human, half-vampire, although Stranger prefers to work alone and is not happy with working with Svetlana. The two of them have had a complicated history in the past, and as of right now, they are two opposites which do not attract. Their fighting styles differ, whereas Svetlana uses blades, Stranger prefers to use gadgets and firearms over melee weapons. And with that in mind, Stranger gears up before departing, where it also becomes apparent that no one really likes working with Stranger, as he pays a visit to Elspeth Doc Holiday who you may remember as the lead character from the Blair Witch Volume 1, Rustin Parr. But Stranger takes a good amount of guns and ammo types along with him, and a new weapon that produces artificial sunlight to fry vampires. Although for obvious reasons, you shouldn't use this around Svetlana. If she goes down, you'll lose the game. Now that you're geared up, it's time to take action. Upon arrival outside the village of Valkenburg, on the way to the castle, things take a grave turn. A crazed man who has hid inside a coffin to escape the monsters which now plague his village, warns you of terrible sentinels and ghoulish creatures ahead. Determined to unravel this mystery, your dynamic duo seeks entry to the village in which Svetlana already senses vampiric presence. Naturally, it wouldn't be so easy as to enter the front gate. The entrance is sealed due to the walking dead, but nearby a key can be found which allows entrance to the village via the crypt. But alas, Svetlana can't pass through sanctified grounds, so for the moment, Stranger goes alone. Now this is the first test. You need to open the gate to let Svetlana in. But to do that, you must defeat a flying demon that wants your blood. The creature is very fast. If you are playing with aiming assist turned off, it's going to be very difficult to hit. And even with it on, it's hard with the space provided to down the creature without taking damage. After all, it does have the high ground. But thankfully, once beaten, you can let Svetlana in and she absolutely wrecks everything with her blades as you clear out the village. When I said the game appears very difficult at the beginning, it's much easier if you let Svetlana do the heavy lifting when she is with you. You face many more enemies when she's around because she just runs right through them. But make sure you're doing your part as well, so Svetlana doesn't get overrun and taken down. As I mentioned previously, if she drops, you lose as well, so back her up from range and try not to let her AI get stuck. I mean, really. And also, take care not to hit Svetlana with a sunlight weapon for obvious reasons. Speaking of the weapons, the sunlight gun might seem like a cool idea, but in practice the weapon is really slow to recharge, and you only get one shot before it needs a long time to recover so you are better off staying with another weapon, especially as switching weapons swaps your ammo type as well. And as different ammo is good against different enemies, you don't want to accidentally switch and waste bullets. Although I think switching weapons and switching ammo should have been different buttons and not the same buttons. Regardless, 
Here, with Svetlana slicing down everything that moves, you can rely on normal bullets and can save your special attacks for when you really need them. Once you've tracked down and slaughtered all of the monsters, the mayor of the village comes out of hiding, and the survivors inform you Count Voikol has taken all of their daughters for some unknown, vile reason away to Castle Galstout. Svetlana has a bad feeling about this, and the whole place smells of death. But now we must press on, and proceed to the hill that overlooks the village and into the forest path. Now it's time to venture into the deep and dark woods, and see what goes bump in the night. If you feel eyes upon you in the dark, maybe you're just being paranoid, but maybe you might be right, and you are being watched. The smell of werewolves is overwhelming, they are all around us. This is where things get crazy, hordes of werewolves spring from the dark wood, and if you get caught, You'll be slashed to pieces in an instant. Stay with Svetlana. Support her with suppressing fire. Use your silver bullets and stay out of melee range. You might get torn up, but keep an eye out for hidden areas and healing items to aid you, and you'll make it through. In this area, it becomes apparent that there is some kind of war going on between the forces of the night, as traps are laid out with the corpses from both sides ensnared. It's a battle between monsters with you in the middle. This section is a maze, but eventually you can make it to a bridge. But you're not out of the woods yet, as it seems this is a bridge too far. Svetlana observes that the bridge appears unstable and it would be too risky to use, so you seek an alternate route. Aside, there is a way inside the castle, if you could fly, that is. Naturally, it's not a problem for Svetlana, who makes a really cool leap of faith, but leaves Stranger in the lurch, forced to venture the broken bridge. The very same bridge Svetlana just advised you directly to avoid. Makes sense. And yes, it is very dangerous. In this section particularly, it's worth noting to make sure to save the game all the time. There is no automatic save here, so you will need to manually save. Although once you have braved a story, chapters from that story can be replayed from the main menu. Ultimately, you don't want this bridge to be your final fall, and have to work your way back to the castle again. A combination of leaps and running leaps just about makes it across, and so we have arrived at the castle. We have finally arrived, but the nightmares don't die at the castle. This horror is just getting started. Vetlana apparently hasn't seen many horror movies, and thinks splitting up is a good idea, for some reason. So now, you'll have to go it alone. Fortunately, now it feels like the opposition is a lot more manageable. If you've made it through the woods alive, you can dance with the devils in the castle with ease. The castle is flooded with sentinels and ghouls, and the entrance is protected by gargoyles, who are motionless and impervious when stone, but vicious and vulnerable when moving. Strike hard when they lash out at you and leave them in a pile of rubble. Speaking of rubble, there are ruins outside the castle. Be sure to investigate to receive a crossbow, a powerful weapon, to drive a stake into a monster's still heart. There's also a suspicious shrine outside, which we'll take note of for later. But for now, we'll turn our attention inside the castle. The castle is full of cunning creatures to battle and hidden areas to explore. Just outside the throne room, there's a curious camera angle by a hatch, which suggests something might be lurking below. But we're not going down yet, we're rising up, but be careful not to fall. And I mean really, even going down steps too fast will cause you damage. But as you make a cautious ascent, be sure to investigate the towers on the roof. One contains a key to the bell tower, and the other contains a clue. A holy staff is hidden in the church remains, and it is the only thing that can put the Count of the Castle down for good. 
when you get as high as you can go, you're rejoined by Svetlana, and your friendly rival Banta is now not so friendly, as she turns against you and leaves you behind. As suddenly as she leaves, suddenly an unknown servant of the master of the castle appears, and warns you Svetlana has been changed by his master. The Count has taken particular interest in her ever since the two of you arrived. Her special abilities will be of great use to him. Fortunately, this servant is all bark and no bite, which is more than I can say for the other denizens of this castle. Atop the bell tower is a hidden tome you'll need for later. To get your hands on this tome, you can sneak past the many sleeping vampires guarding it, or, if you're feeling brave, you can exterminate them all. Your choice. But to aid you in your quest, heed the words of the hint you uncovered atop the castle towers, and return to the church. This is a little cryptic, but understanding how puzzles work in other survival horror games, it stands to reason. Here, you push a suspicious statue to the center of the grounds to open a tomb, retrieving the holy relic. This is not only important to gain this artifact, but it'll also open the hatch we saw previously to the lower levels. But the path below is locked, and we'll have to procure a hidden key above ground first before we tackle below. Now armed with your new equipment, it's time to seek and destroy until we can gain entry to the dark below. Getting through the castle would be a lot easier if you wield the holy relic. Although Stranger normally prefers ranged weapons over melee, if you can get in close and avoid getting hit, this weapon is incredibly overpowered. As you proceed to the second floor of the castle and you pass the dining room, you'll discover that it's you they want for dinner. Of the daughters taken to this castle, some were drained of their blood, and worse, others were made into vampires themselves, and they are formidable opponents, vanishing into mist and reappearing at will. They'll try to get close, to suck your blood. Make sure not to fire blindly as they move into mist and make your mark when they reappear for the final blow. The crossbow is particularly effective here for a shot to the heart and you're to blame. When you've cleared the air, you can find some blessed crossbow bolts which are even more effective. There are countless more monsters roaming the castle, a seemingly unending army of the damned, which will only be stopped when the master is put down for good. Now, as you move on, you'll encounter bigger and badder foes blocking your path. The large, bat-like creatures are especially powerful. To deal with them, stick and move, dodging their attacks, and you'll stand over them in the end. Now, atop the roof, outside the second floor, there is another slightly cryptic move for progression. Admittedly this time, the camera angle is the evil force against you, where, in my opinion, it does not appear as if you can travel outside of the camera perspective, but you must to move on. Another example of this is also on the roof, where if you step away from the camera, you can find a maze of rooms on the third floor, containing a lot of useful resources, but they are defended by many enemies in narrow areas. And you can also, from here, unlock a door leading to the dining room on the second floor, to make traversing a little easier. Now back at the roof of the second floor, be very careful as you walk a fine line across a ruinous and perilous fall, and take a leap of faith to an unreachable area, with a dangerous path behind you falling down. You'll arrive in an area which contains a key to the library, and an exit by unlocking a door back to the throne room. But, if you sacrifice the tome you claimed from the bell tower, another secret route is revealed, where you can finally obtain a key to the dreaded dungeon down below. To escape from here, there's another secret door that'll unlock a way through the third floor rooms, 
Then you can head back out into the dining room on the second floor and finally go deeper and down as you descend. Below the castle, we find a dungeon. I hope you're not afraid of the dark. Through the doom and gloom, you push on. The vampire bats are the least of your concerns, as the dungeon is crawling with terrors beyond imagination. The close quarters combat is the perfect time to unleash your holy relic, which cuts the creatures easily down to size. Moving forward, you arrive at a deathly and bloody guillotine to retrieve a dungeon key, but are set upon by demons. The holy relic really shines here, especially if you don't allow the demons to swarm in, employing tunnel fighting as they scramble through an archway entrance. The key leads you another way, and into a spiked trap. If you have your wits about you, and survive, you can grab another dungeon key. You'll have to fight your way out and make a new exit back to the main dungeon area. Using that new key takes you to a new area, where the pendulum does not swing in your favour. And if you make it past that, in classic horror style, it comes down to a pit and the pendulums. The vampires can traverse this place in mist form, but you don't have that luxury. Don't put a foot out of place because it's a long, long way down. On the other side we find the other missing women from the village. Now as feared, they are vampire brides and they are fierce opposition, but you have holy stakes in your crossbow which literally blows them to bits. With a heavy heart, grab the precious gem you find here, which is an offering to take us down to the Master's Crypt. This is our final destination. Shall this place of darkness become our grave? Or can we deliver a final blow to an undying enemy? This is it. It all ends here. The Master begins battle as a giant flying vampire bat charging straight towards you. You've got to dodge and return fire until you can bring him to the ground. The enemy is very fast, but if you've saved up healing items and set them to use automatically in the options, you can tank some hits as you unleash hell. It's a difficult fight, but eventually they fall. But for the master, that wasn't even his final form. Finally, using dark magic, the grounded vampire tries to bring the roof down upon you, burying you alive. Now, it's time to use the holy relic, and finally send the Count to his final rest. But, it's not over yet. Don't forget to pick the holy relic back up. You wouldn't want to leave without that, especially as more vampire brides come to wreak their vengeance upon you. Once they are dealt with, Stranger finds a survivor hiding in the underground, though she isn't from around these parts. After affirming she hasn't been bitten, Stranger agrees to escort her to safety. Soon after, Svetlana returns. Now her vampire side is free from the Count's influence, but it's here where the story takes a twist, as evident when Stranger spots a portrait hanging defiantly. Not of the Count he defeated, but of the Mayor of Valkenburg. Though Stranger muses, he's probably held other, more sinister titles in the past. Svetlana then remembers feeling an insidious and powerful presence in the village, but until now, she did not know its origin. And if you speak the name of evil, Right on cue, he shall appear. Perhaps I can explain. The man who was thought to be the mayor of Valkenburg is the true lord of this castle. The Count, his son, had banished him to the village in a struggle for power, evident from their minions battling outside the grounds, with the unfortunate villagers caught as collateral damage in the crossfire. Count Volkel could not defeat his father, the true lord of Castle Gastalt, because the Count didn't have use of his father's secret artifact hidden in the castle. 
the so-called Vampire Holy Grail, the Yafki. But now, the Yafki's revealed back in the possession of the reappointed Lord, and his power, once again, is absolute. In true Dark Lord style, he naturally asks you to join him, impressed by your tenacity. But Stranger would rather send the Dark Lord to hell. Svetlana holds him back though, as his power is absolute, and it would be foolish to fight him now. They reluctantly, at this time, accept the former mayor's offer to leave unharmed, as thanks for ridding him of the Count, and exit empty-handed, without the artifact, but safe in the knowledge that without the conflict between the vampires, the werewolves will retreat, and the world will be a safer place. As the smoke clears and the dust settles, this story concludes. As for now, it wasn't an expected outcome, but nonetheless, mission accomplished. As I previously mentioned, there are more chapters to this game that I want to leave in the dark, because I don't want to spoil it all for you should you wish to dare it yourself. For now, Stranger MVL is gone. I am Vampire MVL. And for next time we meet on All Hallows Eve, Blood Rain. A spoiler for next time, and this one, I can't wait to get my teeth into. <laughs>